Welcome to Michael Potts F1, everything Formula One, but from a photographer's point of view. End of year report, Williams Racing. The 2022 F1 season has finally wrapped up with the last event in Abu Dhabi. 22 races have been complete and we can now see who's come out on top, who are the star performers and who hasn't lived up to expectations. Over the next 10 vlogs, I'll look into each of the teams, comparing their drivers and seeing who's performed and who hasn't. We'll compare the high and low points of each driver and statistically analyze how they performed. While the drivers are enjoying their winter breaks, I will pick through my favorite photographs and share with you why I think they're special. Let's start with Williams. Williams are back to being bottom of the standings. This is kind of a familiar position for them. They've been last four out of the last five years. However, saying that, expectations going into this year were quite high for the team. While the team no longer had the services of superstar in the making George Russell, who'd moved over to Mercedes, they did start the year with Nicholas Latifi. He's a veteran of two Formula One campaigns and the new signing, Alex Albon. Hungry and passionate to restart his career after it stalled in 2020 at Red Bull. The team came into the season off the back of some very good results in 2021. They arrived in Barcelona with quite a radical aero package. Here you can see Nicholas Latifi's car running the yellow Flovis paint. That's used to analyze airflow over the car. If you look at the side pods, you can see they start normally, but they turn down quite abruptly in the middle of the car. While this design was radical, it was ultimately ineffective and Williams would abandon it halfway through the season, moving instead to a more Red Bull style philosophy. The highlight for the team was probably the Australian Grand Prix. Here, Alex Elvin drove from last place to 10th. This wasn't the best result of the year, but this was a race where the team nailed a very unusual strategy, keeping Alex out on a set of hard tires the entire race, only changing him at the last lap. While it did work in this race, I don't see that strategy catching on with many other teams. The low point was probably the Singapore Grand Prix, where both cars qualified at the back of the grid and then crashed out in very miserable circumstances. Nicholas Latifi on lap seven after pushing Guan Yu Zhou into the wall, and Alex very, very feebly drove into the barrier in the wet. Head to head, Nicholas Latifi versus Alex Albin and Nick de Vries. Alex Albin sat out Monza due to appendicitis and was replaced by Nick de Vries. Albin dominated the head to head, outscoring Latifi by four points to two, which doesn't sound like a lot, but let's look at the other stats, which will paint a much clearer picture. In the races where both finished, Albin was ahead 12 times to one, and that one comes with a bit of an asterisk. It was at the Monaco Grand Prix and Alex retired due to a mechanical issue, but was still classified. So actually, Alex finished ahead in all of the races where they both finished. Over the course of the season, Alex's average result was about 13th place, while Latifi was around about 16th. In qualifying, Alex was ahead on 19 occasions compared to Nicholas's two. Again, there's a bit of an asterisk with one of those two. The Emilia Romano Grand Prix, Alex didn't set a time. So effectively, that's 19 to one. But that one was the British Grand Prix where Latifi drove out of his socks in appalling conditions to get his car into Q3. On average, Elvin qualifies around 16th and Latifi around 18th. However, there were 12 races where he was the slowest qualifier. Alex also leads the sprint races two to one. In the one race that Nick de Vries stood in for Albon, he qualified ahead of Latifi and drove amazing race to finish in the points on his debut. That all but sealed the end of Latifi and secured de Vries a drive at Alpha Tauri. Here he is talking to Ted Kravitz before the start of the race in Monza. It's wonderful to see how excited he is. But my favorite shot of him is this in an Alpha Tauri taken at the end of the season in the Pirelli tire test at Abu Dhabi. Here he is driving for the team that he'll be participating for in 2023. It's taken under the Yas Marina Hotel. The cladding casts an interesting shadow on the car below. And yes, I know this is a review about the Williams season, and this is an Alpha Tauri, but for a driver that's turned out for four different teams this year, I think it's only fitting. Nicholas Latifi was not able to convince the management at Williams to extend his contract into next season, and instead he'll be replaced by Logan Sargent. In three seasons in Formula One, Latifi has battled in an underperforming car against much more talented teammates. This shot of Latifi is taken in Austin at the American Grand Prix. I've shot it through the barriers and the fencing with a slow shutter speed. This gives you a great silhouette of the Williams. It works particularly well here as the team colors are blurred into the background 
adding another layer to the shot. Next, this photograph is taken from Monza. It's of Latifi as he drives towards the Varianta Ascari, just before he drives under the bridge. I like the way the car is lit and framed by the darkness of the bridge and the surrounding trees in the forest. The high point was that exceptional drive to get into Q3 in Silverstone, in awful conditions. The low point was probably being outqualified and outraced by a substitute driver at Monza. Alex Albon has had a remarkable season. He looked completely destroyed at the end of 2020. He was off the pace compared to his teammate Max Verstappen at Red Bull, and he had lost the confidence of the team management. But they kept him on as a reserve driver in 2021. And this work in the simulator helped Max win that title. Red Bull found him a seat at Williams, and now you see a driver transformed. His hunger and his dedication is back, and he's blossomed into a team leader. The first shot I'd like to share with you is from Texas. Alex is heading towards a bridge, and the shadows are creating some strong dynamic lines here. The car is turning a bit in the corner, and that allows the back to distort, while the front stays fairly recognizable. This also adds a sense of speed and movement. There's a simple color palette in the shot, with strong blue, red, and white tones coming through. That helps create quite a simple but yet powerful image. While the team's highlight was that epic race in Australia, Alex's best result was ninth place at the Miami Grand Prix. This is a shot of Alex racing past the underpass. I, I photographed it with a wide angle lens and it makes an interesting image because I've shot so close to the car. In the race, he started 18th and ended up 9th, which is a phenomenal result. Even if some of those positions were the results of other drivers knocking themselves out, Alex still made sure he was in the right position to maximize the points. The team will actually be quite positive going into 2023, despite finishing last. There's a lot of very, very good signs emerging for Williams. Albon has blossomed into the team leader, and Logan Sargent is going to bring a lot of new energy to the team. It'll also give the team a lot of attention having the only American on the grid as they go to the new race in Las Vegas next year. While they might not have got all the results they wanted this year, Williams are heading in the right direction. They're in the process of building a great little racing team. Next year, they'll have the advantage of having more wind tunnel time than any other team. They've managed to build a very fast car. Now they just need to make sure it can go around corners. I do expect to see them improve in 2023. I expect to see more Q3 appearances, and I expect to see them fighting for points more often. Thank you for watching my end of year report on the Williams team. I really hope you've enjoyed it. What do you think their prospects will be for next year? And do you think Logan Sargent is going to deliver better results than Nicholas Latifi? How do you think Alex and Sargent are going to get on? And where do you see them finishing next season? If you'd like to buy any photographs as Christmas presents, there's a link in the description below. And if you'd like to help keep this photographer in caffeine over the winter break, there's a link to buy me a coffee in the description. Until the next one, goodbye.